Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to end another video. And this is another paid request from Walker. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, whether it be a topic, reaction, commentary, review, re review, random thoughts, commentaries, reactions, video game playthrough, whatever the case may be, I'll get to it as soon as I can. And Walker sent, he sent decent amount of requests for me to react to his list his rankings and that's fine with me if he Walker if you watch you do feel free to send as many as you want I'll do it when I can so thank you so this one is he wanted me to react to his rankings of the top 10 movies praised but he doesn't rewatch please read notes in parentheses honorable mention sure Nope by Jordan Peele. I actually like that film. I have that film on Blu-ray right here. I like that it's a flying saucer that's <laughs> that eats people. I think that's a really cool idea. I like the acting. I think it's a gorgeous looking movie. I like the special effects involved. Some bits of the dialogue I'm not big on. But... There are scenes I do enjoy, like the when it's raining blood in that one scene, and when the the town, well, not the, but there's people getting sucked up, and you see kind of the inner workings remind me a bit of Fire in the Sky, where that gave me a bit of a creepy vibe, and they're like going through pretty much a <laughs> digestion, <laughs> digest, section. What's your major malfunction? <laughs> I, I liked Nope. I thought it was pretty good. So I disagree with that. Number 10, Taxi Driver. Still watch it sometimes. So you do rewatch it. You said, does it rewatch? What to be? I mean, he said, does it rewatch much, to be fair. But I like Taxi Driver. I just to be fair, do I rewatch Taxi Driver a lot? No. Obviously, he doesn't hate the film because he still watches sometimes. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I like Taxi Driver. Like I said, I guess I don't rewatch a lot to be fair. So I guess that's similar. Number nine, twenty eight days and twenty eight weeks later. Twenty eight days later, like I haven't. A lot of times I haven't seen a film again because there's just so many movies and other pieces of media and stuff to do in so little time. But 20, 28 days later, I would not mind rewatching. 20 weeks later, I did rewatch that. I didn't think it was as good as when I first saw it. I think because like, I didn't really care about the character, the lead characters. I wish, like, Jeremy Renner, I think Anthony Mackie, I kind of wish those were our main characters instead. Because I much preferred them over the, the kids. And the ending I wasn't big on. I mean, th there's some good moments to that movie. And it's not an awful film. But I just remember not liking it as much as I used to. I'll put it that way. I do like the first 28 days later more. Number 8, The Running Man. 100% disagree. I think The Running Man is a very rewatchable film. It's fun. The one line... All the one liners from Arnold. How about the light? Hey, Christmas tree, follow me, light bulb. I live to see you eat the contract, but I hope you leave some room for my fist, because you're a jabber to stomach and break your goddamn spine. Hill sub zero, now plane zero. How about the light, you know? Drop dead. I don't do requests. Killian. One of us is a big trouble. Uh, the action, the great story by Harold Faltermeyer, the villains with that WWF kind of larger than life persona, Sub Zero, Fireball, Dynamo. Richard Dawson's a great villain, and because he was a game show host, it, he was perfect casting. So I highly disagree. The Ruddy Man to me is an absolute classic. Six, the original Chainsaw Massacre, I disagree. I think the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a fine horror film. 
great to rewatch for the horror film season. It's got a wonderful, gritty, documentary-style feel to it. One of those films back in the day that did... Now, this is a film closest to steering me. It was definitely that film, so I definitely disagree with that. Number six, Midsommar. I agree, because I think that film fucking sucks. I think that director makes shitty films. And I don't care about a group of people that see a person get pushed off a cliff to their death. And then they spend the next ten minutes arguing about a thesis paper. Not about what the hell they saw. I'm supposed to give about these people? Piss on them. Five, Infinity Pool. I like the movie, but it's a very heavy movie. I don't like the film. I don't think it's that good of a film. But, you yeah. know. Number four, Saltburn. Again, I liked it, but not rewatchable at all. Was well, not rewatchable, I agree, because what is there to rewatch? A guy tricking people, being a dick, killing a bunch of dumb, rich people, because they're the dumbest people on earth. Like, he got together with the most <laughs> easy to twist and turn people in existence. That felt like it took three hours. Number three, the Godfather movies. I agree. I agree. By the way, my idea Saltburn was praised by some people. But yeah, Godfather movies, I agree. So, I mean, honestly... 28 Weeks Later, I would agree. As in, I don't rewatch. Midsommar, I would agree. Infinity Pool, I would agree. I don't rewatch. Saltburn, I agree. I don't rewatch. Godfather movies, I don't rewatch. So I guess we agree a lot on this. Last House on the Left. Last House on the Left original. There's nothing to like about it. I'm not a fan of it, but I can't say there's nothing. I like David Hess. I thought I gave a good performance as the lead villain. I like the song, The Road Needs, Leads to Nowhere. The Road Leads to Nowhere. I think that's a good song. I think David Hess does a solid job. But I, I, other than that, yeah, I'm not a fan of the original Last House on the Left. I much prefer the remake. The remake I liked a lot more. West Raven films, I prefer Shocker, Nightmare on Elm Street, People Under the Stairs, Serpent of the Rainbow. Blair Witch 1999, I don't like it, not a bad film, but people love it for some reason. Well, yeah, I mean, I love it. Which, by the way, that film isn't really praised anymore, because there's a lot of people who do not like that film. But, I guess at the time, there were critics that praised it, but I love the Blair Witch Project. I saw that on VHS, did not see the heavy marketing. I only saw a TV spot. Cisco and Ebert, I think yeah, I think Roger Ebert reviewed it, and that's really all I saw about it. I saw it, and it was such a unique way of making a film. It felt like I was watching. Was I mean, I was with these group. I was the fourth member of this group, and I saw the last days they were alive. It gave this creepy aura and feeling that got me hooked, and I think. Number one, for people that request them, I'll gladly do it, but there are Final Fantasy films I do enjoy, and maybe part of me is like looking for that high, that terror that I felt back to the day when I first saw that on VHS. I think October of 99 I saw it, because I remember it being very quit. Quit? Quit what? What the fuck am I talking about quit? Very quick. <laughs> Sorry, it's late. It's like 3 a.m. I couldn't sleep. It's 3 a.m. while I'm doing this. <laughs> Very. It quickly went to VHS at the time. Because I believe it came out in May or such. In the summer. May or maybe July. Maybe July came out. It only took a few months for it to get on VHS tape. I remember that being very quick. I mean, wow, it's October. It's already on home video. And I watched it, and I remember my whole my heart was just pumping as it got to the finale. I'm like, what the hell? And I loved it. I still love the film. 
I got the shot glasses, I got the comic book, I tried to play the video game for PC, but I'm not a good PC gamer. I got like the little diary that you write in, but it's got, you know, once in a while a little picture in there. I saw the sci-fi channel special, Curse of the Blair Witch. I even, I think I saw that Showtime one, the Burtisville 7, that was like years later. I was hooked, and I think the three actors do a great job. They're realistic. They're believable. I like their interactions. I like them as characters. Yes, even Heather. The woods, it's simple, but it becomes a very creepy place. I feel what they feel. I see what they see. I don't see what they don't see. It's simplicity of horror at its finest, in my opinion. Where you have three people that give incredibly believable reactions to what's going on a breakdown of communication uh, them trying to stay together while these forces are messing around with them until ultimately their fate happens by the end of the film it's so raw and it's so in a weird way pure in its found footage low budget trappings that it just doesn't feel overproduced. There's no cheap jump scares. There's no like random music put in. Simplicity at its finest in my opinion. Like I said, I love the Blair Witch Project. So I I like I disagree with Nope. I I mean I guess I kind of agree with Tezzer because I don't rewatch it a lot. Twenty days later I would disagree. Twenty weeks later I would agree, but. That's because I'm not a fan of the film. Running Man, heavily disagree. Original Chainsaw, I heavily disagree. Men Some More, I agree because I don't like the film. Infinity Pool, I agree because I don't like it. So you say you like the film, I disagree with that part. Saltburn, I know you say you liked it, I disagree. I think it's a piece of shit. But it's true, I don't rewatch it. Godfather films, I don't rewatch. Last House on Left, original, I don't rewatch. And Blair's Project, I disagree because I would gladly rewatch that. If that, when I get the November 2nd site, would want to rewatch it then. So there you go. <laughs> but thanks once again, Walker. Appreciate the request. I'll get to the others as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.